Turning back to those FBI raids and hedge funds, we're joined now by attorney Mark Rifkin. Mark has been on both sides of these cases throughout his career, suing funds, but also representing them. And Mark, you think this is just the tip of the iceberg? I do. Good morning. Okay, so tell us why. I think the government uh, has uh, shown that it's looking at a number of big players in, in the information industry. We have seen now a prosecution of uh, Galleon, and I think that's led the government in a direction that they are now expanding. And I think it's clear to me that we're going to see many more uh, informants come forward. We're going to see more deals being cut. And uh, the government is going to step up what looks like a very extensive and a very aggressive investigation. Because this has taken three years, right? That's what we're learning. We're learning that this investigation has been going on for three years. We know that there have been uh, a number of people who have agreed to wear wires. We know the government's asked many others uh, to wear uh, wires as well. These cases are very, very difficult. We know difficult. that. We know there's been people. We do. Okay. We do. We know that uh, these cases, these kinds of cases, these gray area uh, insider trading cases are very difficult to prove without uh, corroborating witnesses or corroborating testimony. And I think as the government starts to develop more and more of that, we'll continue to see more and more prosecutions. Well, we had a guest on earlier, Peter Rupp, who runs a fund of funds, and he was saying the opposite, though. He said, look, you know, these types of cases are very specific. They're patterned around specific stocks. And, uh, you know, and so, therefore, he believes that this is going to actually be quite contained. But you're saying the complete opposite. I, I disagree. I think that although we do see uh, certain patterns in certain stocks, the patterns from one stock to another are oftentimes very similar. And so we'll, we'll see, for example, we'll see trading ahead of a particular announcement. We'll see a, a particular group of traders who will trade from one security to another security and back and forth many times. We'll see the same kinds of activity that make us suspicious. And the government is looking at the same sort of thing. And I suspect, and we're all just guessing now, but I suspect that as the government starts to push over one domino after another, more and more of this will come out. I don't think this is just a, a practice that's confined to one or two or even a handful of people, a but small being, handful. But being that you've routinely seen insider trading cases in your career, what yes. do you think a three-year investigation means that they're exactly looking at? Well, what part of insider I mean, What exactly? I, I think, and I again, this is just a guess on sure. my part, but I, I think that when they, when they began their prosecution against Galleon, uh, they uncovered uh, an entire network of uh, people who are trading on inside information, and I think they were surprised by that. And I think it takes the government a while to react to that kind of surprise. It takes them a while to be able to. But this is line three up. years, so this was even before. This predates Galleon, though. Well, Galleon's trading goes back to 2008, so that's that's two years already behind. And now we're looking at the sort of the aftermath of all of this. I suspect that before uh, they began the prosecution, they investigated Galleon for some time. And, uh, and I think that what we'll see is as they begin to uncover more and more and more of this extensive network, and it's not all uh, one giant conspiracy. I don't think the government's going to try to prove that. But I think as they see more and more players in this information trading industry, we will see more and more prosecutions. I, I imagine that's what's taken the government so long to be able to develop the cases that we're now seeing them move on. Well, it's interesting when you mention conspiracy, that's kind of the word that Wilbur Ross used where he felt that there is almost this unfair singling out of SAC and Steve Cohen. Um, you know, he was saying, look, people in hedge fund and you know, the hedge fund industry, they move around. You know, why him, essentially? And, and he's been, he's been the, the father, if you will, to a number of other hedge funds. People have left SAC and they've gone and they've started their own uh, hedge funds. But uh, let's face it, uh, people in that industry learn from others how the industry operates, how the business is conducted, and everyone, every hedge fund manager is looking for an advantage. And one of the easiest advantages is to trade on information that you think no one else has. Mm -hmm. And if that means you're going to go out and you're going to look for an intermediary who can provide that to you, great. If it means you're going to look for a, a tip. Uh, from an insider, great, whatever the case may be, that's what the government is now looking at. Right. And I think the government is just beginning uh, to expand its investigation as far out as, as those tentacles will take it. Mark, thank you. I appreciate it stopping by.